In his apostolic letter, Rosarium Virginis Mariae, the Rosary of the Virgin Mary, Pope St. John Paul II introduced and proposed to the faithful a new set of mysteries to which we can meditate, the mysteries of light. Since the second millennium, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, this prayer, the Rosary, has been loved, promoted, and encouraged by saints and the teaching office of the Church. The three traditional mysteries on which we meditate focus on various periods of the life of Jesus, which offers a compendium of the Gospel. The joyful mysteries allow us to meditate on the incarnation, nativity, and infancy of Jesus. The sorrowful mysteries allow us to meditate on the passion and death of Jesus. And the glorious mysteries allow us to meditate on the resurrection, ascension of Jesus, as well as the life of the Church following Pentecost. All the mysteries, because they are centered on Jesus, are mysteries of light, because he is light from light and the light of the world. However, St. John Paul II recognized that there was a gap for the public life of Jesus. And for the rosary to be a true compendium of the gospel, wanted these mysteries of light to help us go deep into the revelation of the kingdom now present in the very person of Jesus. Now, if you've been keeping up with the gospels of the last two weeks, and know the five mysteries of life, you would start seeing a little bit of a correlation. Today, we, cele uh, we, we celebrated the baptism of our Lord, the first mystery of light. And then the wedding at Cana, the second mystery of light. And this week, we have the inauguration of Jesus' public ministry, the proclamation of the kingdom of God, which is the third mystery of light. And he begins this mission in his hometown synagogue of Nazareth. Each one of these Gospels helps us to see and understand the identity of Jesus as the Son of God and Son of Man, and his mission to bring about our salvation. These Gospels also help us understand who we are and how we are being called to live. Salvation is not merely being saved from sin. Salvation is being saved for sonship to be adopted children of God. Jesus' mission is to bring about the promised covenant renewal, the fulfillment of what was promised. Today, these scriptures fulfilled in our hearing and was to bring about our restoration in our relationship with God. Through the sacrament of baptism, we become children of God, and that is who we are. And in our reception of the Eucharist, we have the consummation of the covenant. God giving himself to us to receive. The fulfillment of the promise. Through the sacrament of confirmation, we are given a special outpouring of the Holy Spirit, like the apostles, anointed for mission to live our baptismal dignity as children of God. And this is how we are being called to live. Our whole life, then, as Christians, is to be deeply rooted in our identity as children of God, growing in holiness, and to live out the mission of the church that Christ has given to us, strengthened, anointed by the Holy Spirit. St. Paul helps us understand this profound reality as Christians. By the one Holy Spirit that we have all received at baptism, we have become one body in Christ, connected to each other by our union with Christ. It's not just some metaphor. This is truly deeply who we are at our very being. This Holy Spirit, the soul of the mystical body of Christ, gives life, growth, and direction to each one of us, to each one of the members. In a time where there is much division in the world on various ideological ethnic, and social-political lines, we have to recall that these lines of division are irrelevant in the sight of God. They are brought about by the evil spirit, not the Holy Spirit. And because we are the one body of Christ, we are to bring about the unity in the world, starting with our own self, then with our neighbor, and then to 
the society around us. And St. Paul encourages us all, these years later, after he had written to the Corinthians, that we serve a vital and indispensable role in bringing about this unity, this bringing about of the building of God, the building up of the body of Christ, to bring others into this covenant relationship with God. No task is insignificant, but for the good of the whole, for unity. And each of us has received gifts to accomplish this task. And while we can get caught up in all the bad news that the world offers, we are being charged with the task to make known to everyone that we meet. The joy of the Lord is our strength, that this is the year of the Lord's favor, that God has come to be with us and restores our life, bringing hope, joy, unity, peace. And this is good news. News that is not restricted, not locked down, unchained, the word of God going forth, spreading like wildfire, that brings us freedom, that brings us clarity, that makes us rich, not in the eyes of the world, but in the eyes of God. By living our lives grounded in our identity as children of God, with a unified purpose and mission, and a variety of gifts for each of us to carry out, our part, we are no longer indifferent toward others. And we are encouraged to mutually support one another with empathy and compassion. And by this they will know we are Christians, by our love. And we become what we meditate, become what we celebrate, a living compendium of the gospel, bringing Christ's light, Christ's love to the world.